Right now, joining us on the Fox Sports Hotline, UFC middleweight Brad Tavares, who's fighting Yoel Romero on that main card. Brad, thank you so much for joining the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. We appreciate your time. We know you're very busy. You're down in Orlando right now getting all geared up for this fight, which is huge for you being that he's a number 14 ranked, you're number 13 ranked. How much of a chance is this for you to make a statement and really get some exposure being on the Fox main card? Uh, you know, it, it's huge. Um, I would say to date, this is the biggest card and the biggest opportunity that I've been able to be a part of. Um, Fox is is free, and it's, a, it's in millions upon millions of homes throughout the nation. So a lot of eyes will be on this card, and a lot of eyes will be on, on my fight. You, and, uh, you know, it's just a huge opportunity. Yoel Romero, you know, he has that background of being an Olympic wrestler. He has a silver medal in freestyle wrestling. What do you make of that background, and how much of a challenge is that for you? Um, you know, it's something, of course, that stands out about him. It's, uh, it's huge. He's, he's an Olympic silver medalist, so, you know, it's no joke. But uh, as far as... Uh, his wrestling goes, you know, I, I I respect his wrestling. I know he has those credentials, but from what I've seen in the fight, I don't think he really, you know, has the best MMA wrestling. I think there are other people out there in our division with better MMA wrestling. Um, but that's not to say, you know, it's it's to be taken lightly. Uh, the other thing about him is that he's won all his fights. I think the knockout or TKO. So that's something to you know to really that I really prepare for is the fact that he's very dangerous on the feet. So, uh, yeah, he, he is a wrestler, but uh very, very powerful, handed guy. So, uh, you know, I, I got ready for those things. Yeah, now, you, you brought up an excellent point, Brad, in that you said that he does have excellent credentials when it comes to wrestling, but not wrestling in MMA. You saw in his last fight against Derek Brunson, Brunson took him down quite often. Can you explain to some of the listeners out there who may not be as qualified to know what the difference is between MMA wrestling and regular wrestling? Well, regular wrestling, you know, obviously is just wrestling. Um, no, no striking involved. They don't have to worry about getting hit. They don't have to worry about shooting into knees, kicks, um, all that type of stuff. Um, you know, the other thing is that in wrestling, it's on an open mat with no walls. Whereas in MMA, you're in a cage, so it's easy to push somebody up against a cage and then wrestle from there. And that's something that, you know, wrestlers, especially high-level wrestlers like Yo, don't, don't really do too much. They stick to what they're going to do um, and what they end up doing in the Olympics, which is starting out in the open, um, on an open mat. So, you know, for guys like that who have been doing it a certain way their whole life, it doesn't always translate over well. There are other guys that, you know, work it well into their game. Um, Daniel Parmier, for example, he is excellent in MMA wrestling. He uses his strikes, closes the distance, and gets to that clinch and then to the takedown really well. But, uh, you know, Yo, I'm not sure if he doesn't possess that or if because he's been so successful striking and knocking people out that he doesn't feel like he needs to work up work on his uh, MMA wrestling. Well, let's talk about a couple of those fights that he's had as of late. Both of his last two wins have come in the f third and final round. And before those knockouts have come, we've kind of seen his cardio fade a little bit. How key do you think your cardio uh, is in this fight, being that we know that you have a great cardio uh, when you get in there and mix it up? Um, you know, cardio in any fight is crucial. You don't want to train harder for one fight than another. Uh, you want to train hard for every fight, and you got to keep training harder because the, hard, the more you fight, the more you keep winning. You know, that obviously, you'll get the main card slots and, and the title shots, and those are five-round fights. But for this fight, you know, it, of course, you know, it's um, he's one of those guys that, he starts off really slow, and, uh, you know, in the third, he kind of doesn't pick it up. It doesn't look like he picks it up too much, but he does look for that home run. Um, so, and I think in our last fight at the press conference, he, he mentioned something like that. Like, he'll let guys gas themselves out 
for the first two rounds and then, to, you know, to go for it all in third. But, uh, you know, I've said it before, you know, if that's his game plan to me, I, I don't see it working because I come prepared to fight from minute one to minute 15, and I'll be in it, cardio, and my mind, my heart throughout that whole fight. Yeah, you have a pretty good ohana that you train with, and of course that means family in Hawaiian. That is Brad's background. And if you're just joining us right now, we are on the line with UFC middleweight Brad Tavares. You train under Ray Sefo. You've uh, actually cornered a couple of other guys who have gone on to big wins, Brenton and Bryson Hansen. Uh, how I interesting is it for you to, to kind of play those roles, to train with the guy with Ray Sefo, and then also switch um, from being the fighter to being a corner man? Um, you know, for, for me, fighting is, is, uh, is fun and I, you know, I, I really don't get too nervous before a fight and feel like any type of anxiety. Whereas when I corner, especially when I corner like Brenton and Bryson, you know, those guys are really close to me. Um, we've known each other a long time. Uh, we pretty much moved to Vegas together. We live together. So I'm really close to those guys. And it's, uh, any, when I corner any of my guys, I don't know, for some reason, you know, it's, it's a lot more nerve wracking for me. I, I, I don't know why, because I know that they're in shape. I know they're well prepared. And, you know, I know I know that they'll beat the guys that stand across the cage from, but I don't know. It's just, I guess it's because I have no control over it besides the fact of, you know, what I'm cornering and what I'm saying. So it, it's a little weird. But, uh, you know, it, it really is cool because I get to learn from Ray and so do they. And then, uh, you know, I get to turn on that uh, coach switch every now and then and, and be the coach in the corner. Actually, that's not surprising. We actually have heard that quite a few times. When you're a fighter, you can control the situation. You can control what happens in the cage when you're doing it. But when your teammate or someone you're cornering, you can't control that. And that uh, apparently a lot makes a lot of guys nervous. It's really funny. But, um, you know, fight day's coming up. You got weigh-ins on Friday. The fight is Saturday. The next couple of days, obviously, lots of media uh, the weight cut, which is usually the hardest part for most fighters. What's your schedule? What's your the, your agenda for the next couple of days leading up to weigh-in? Um, you know, I this is taper week, and obviously there are some media obligations. Um, I have, I think, another phone interview or so today. Uh, tomorrow is a press conference, pre-fight press conference. And then, uh, you know, it, Thursday night, that's when... You know, the, the weight cut starts, cut out waters and, and foods. And then right into Friday morning and then weigh in Friday. And then it's all about replenishing and then going to work Saturday. Now, you talked about the press conference. Is this the first time that you're going to be attending a pre-fight press conference with the big names? Um, yeah, this is the first time I'll be a part of the, the pre-fight press conference. So, uh, yeah, a little bit different experience for me. Um, but I'm sure it'll be fine. You excited? Uh, yeah. I mean, not. I mean, not. Not really excited. I, I I really wouldn't care one way or the other. I could just chill in the room, hang out. That's fine with me. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cool to to be able to get a little more exposure, I guess. And you know, hopefully, I can answer some questions if they got them for me. Uh, well, I got to tell you, man, I'm really looking forward to the fight. You got two top middleweights in the organization going at it. Both you guys are on massive win streaks. Going to see a contender come out of this one. Really looking forward to your fight this Saturday, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. And just one last question for me, Brad, before we let you go. I know you've got a ton of obligations to get to today. Uh, Phil just mentioned your five-fight win streak here, and I'm curious, where do you think a win puts you in the division? And, and if, if you should get that win, where do you think that should take you next? Um, uh, let's say I get this win. I, I see myself at least jumping up to number 10, or nine and uh if uh as far as next goes i you know hopefully it's someone ranked above me so that after i beat them i can take their spot and keep climbing 
Well, excellent. We're going to wish you all the best of luck. Again, Brad Tavares will be fighting Yoel Romero, UFC on Fox 11. That takes place April 19th from Orlando, Florida. And again, that main card starts on Fox this Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific. So make sure to tune in, everybody. And Brad, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys.